In Africa, in the Congo region, there have been reports coming in for about 200 years from Western explorers suggesting that there might just be a dinosaur or a huge unknown animal that lives here. And for the natives, this is common knowledge, but even for them who have lived here for thousands of years, these sightings are extremely rare. One of the first accounts coming from Western explorers happened in 1776 when French missionaries were passing through the thick forest and they noticed huge footprints on the ground. They said that these tracks were about the size of an elephant, but whatever animal made these tracks had claws, and elephants don't have claws. And while these French missionaries were staying within the Congo, one of the priests claimed to have seen several of these very big, unknown animals in the river feeding on the plant life. Now in 1776, no one really knew about dinosaurs, so this priest thought that he was looking at a whole new species that were never seen or documented before by a white man. Then in 1913, a German explorer was visiting the Congo and the natives told him stories about a creature that they called the Mokele Mbembe. And their description of this animal is pretty much identical to a class of dinosaurs known as sauropods. And this explorer was hooked, but he could never find any real evidence of this elusive animal. Now because of all these stories and somewhat credible sightings of this monster, a British scientist in 1932 went to the Congo to go see if he could find any real proof of this animal. And while he was traveling down the river in a canoe, he started to hear some very strange and rather frightening sounds of what seemed to be coming from a very large animal. And he did find some huge tracks, but he was never able to actually see this creature in person. And that very same year, a world famous zoologist and biologist, Ivan T. Sanderson, was traveling down a river with a friend just north of the Congo. And while the two men were enjoying themselves paddling down the river, they started to hear a terrifying sound. And they said that this sound was kind of like an earthquake. Then the water within the river started to boil and foam. Then they saw a huge head coming right out from the water and this animal was just staring at the two men. In Mr. Sanderson's own words, I don't know what we saw, but the animal, the monster, burned itself into my retinas. It looked like something that ought to have been dead millions of years ago. As a scientist, I should have been happy, of course, but this encounter was so frightening, so nasty, that I never wanted to see it again. Making this one of the most famous earlier sightings of Mokele and Bembe, as Ivan T. Sanderson was a very famous man, especially within this field. Then in 1948, some English soldiers were swimming in a lake in northern Cameroon, when all of a sudden some very big animals broke the surface of the water, and the soldiers, scared for their lives, swam to shore as fast as they could. And from the shoreline they observed two giant reptiles, and these reptiles had very long necks. One of them had a horn on his head, but the other smaller one did not have this horn. They also stated that their skin looked very smooth, but scaly. Another rather strange account happened in 1992 when a Japanese expedition claimed that they saw Mokele and Bembe swimming in a lake. And they filmed it, but the cameraman left the lens cap on, so they only got 15 seconds of footage. And this footage is very famous but many believe that it's just an elephant swimming or people in a canoe. And in 2003, another expedition did stumble upon something rather interesting. This expedition noticed that at the 18 foot range, all the trees within a certain area had no branches, and it appeared that these branches had been eaten off. Then again in 1986, a man named Rory Nugent and his expedition were investigating the world's largest unexplored swamp on this earth in Africa when they saw a very long neck coming right out from the water. And Rory wanted to get closer as he believed that he was actually seeing the legendary Mokele and Bembe. But the native guides ordered him to stop at gunpoint as they didn't want him to disturb the creature. Now Rory claimed that he had taken some very clear photos of Mokele and Bembe. But while back at camp the natives demanded that he destroy them as they believed that if Rory kept these pictures, Mokele and Bembe would kill them all. Now it is true that the natives within this region, or any region really, are very superstitious, but a lot of people are very skeptical about the story. And according to my research, there are some variations to this case, such as Rory did keep these photos, but they were just too blurry to make anything out. There is also a very fascinating case involving a tribe of pygmies. A missionary, Reverend Eugene Thomas, who had served in the Congo since 1955, told the world a very interesting story in 1979. 
Mr. Thomas said that while he was living in the Congo, he heard a pretty remarkable tale about a tribe of pygmies that constructed a very large spike fence within the Congo's Lake Tella because huge creatures with very long necks kept interfering with their fishing. But one of these creatures managed to break through the fence and it was seriously wounded and the tribe ended up killing it. And everyone who ate the meat ended up dying, making the surviving pygmies believe that these creatures possessed supernatural abilities. Now I'm not sure when this happened, but in the 1980s, some eyewitnesses told Mr. Thomas that they were actually able to see the remains of this spike fence. Now we do have some credible sightings, some possible tracks, and a heck of a lot of stories. But one thing that really stands out to me is the name. Mokeli and Bembe actually means the one who stops the flow of rivers. So even if all these accounts are fake or misidentification, I do believe that humans within this region maybe thousands of years ago did come face to face with a sauropod-like dinosaur or an unknown species that resembles a sauropod as these legends and stories have to come from some sort of truth. Until next time, this is Paranormal Junkie. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.